Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CV Winners video series on C++ threading series and this topic is about timed mutex in C++ threading. So before this video we learned about mutex, race condition, critical section. Before this video I explain what is mutex and all the things related to that and we know if uh, there is some variable m dot lock then this is a mutex then you have to lock it and then m dot unlock this time music is also similar but it gives you the timing how long it will wait for this particular mutex what i mean to say is let's suppose there are two threads t1 and t2 okay and there is one mutex m1 dot lock you have this m dot lock here so either m1 will able to lock this first or T2 sorry T1 will able to lock this or T2 either of this will be able to lock M1 first and let's suppose T1 have locked then T2 have to wait for this mutex M correct so somewhere after some code you have to write M1 dot unlock then only T2 can acquire this lock till then T2 will wait here let's suppose there are few lines of the code so this was the typical behavior in mutex now can you see that if m1 is logged and let's suppose this time period is taken by t1 to actually unlock it okay and let's suppose this time is one minute then t2 will wait here for one minute and it is kind of a time waste if t2 have something else to do but you will say that then there is something called try lock in mutex correct so the syntax would be like instead of lock we will write here try lock then t2 will not wait for that lock and it will do something else correct i have given that video also you can see that after this video okay in the list that is called try lock on mutex but the problem with that try lock is it will immediately return false. What I mean to say is T1 acquired the lock, then T2 also tried to acquire the lock and we are using try lock, then T2 will get false in that case and immediately start doing something else. But I want to wait for this mutex for particular amount of time, let's say one second or 100 milliseconds. And then I want to do something else, not right at the moment then we have this timed mutex you will tell the timeout period that i want to wait for this much amount of time for this mutex and if i don't get that mutex in that particular time then i'm ready to do something else okay so this is what the definition says standard timed up mutex is blocked till timeout or the lock is acquired and returns true if success otherwise false so there are two things if this is timed mutex this one then in that case the another thread which is actually waiting for this mutex for this particular amount of time will actually get the mutex in given time let's suppose uh, if this mutex i mean this full work is taking one minute and this t2 is ready to wait for maybe 1.5 minutes or two minutes then in that case t2 will get the lock because it will wait for this t1 to finish okay because t1 took one minute and t2 is ready to wait for two minutes okay then in that case t2 will get the lock and t2 will also come here and do its job but let's suppose t1 was ready to wait for only half of the minute but t1 will take one minute to finish this then in that case t2 will not get the lock t2 will get false in return and t2 will understand that no i'm not going to get this mutex in given time what is half time okay so i'll tell you the syntaxes and all that so i have this full program here this was just the introduction and the glance what we will go through in this video okay so these are the member function what it supports there is this traditional mutex lock, try lock, these two function and this one is exactly similar in mutex and this but there are two different functions this one and this one so we'll be covering these two functions in this video.
So we'll take try log four first. Okay. So the definition for this says that waits until specified amount of time duration has elapsed or log is acquired. Whichever comes first will happen. Okay. And on successful log acquisition, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Okay. So let's look at the program and we'll understand this better. So this is your program here. It is fairly simple program. What we have in our hand is there is global amount variable which is initialized with this zero and we are creating two threads t1 and t2 and there is this function which will become thread okay and this one and two I am passing as thread one and thread two okay so these are the identities for the threads correct and as we are learning try log for this is the syntax for try log for it will take how many seconds we have to wait for so this is timed mutex m and we are going to try the log for one second so let's see how this will work so t1 and t2 will get created at the same time and they both will try to log this m because it is global so this is common between these two threads okay so they both will try to lock this mutex and any one of them will succeed okay so for this moment let's assume t1 succeeded first then it is saying that try lock for this much second which is one second but as it was in unlock position initially t1 will immediately get the lock instead of waiting for one second it will directly get the lock because it was unlocked already okay so my amount will get incremented by one which is zero so it will become one and i'm telling this thread to sleep for two seconds so what happened t1 acquired the lock mutex and it is sleeping for two seconds till now t2 was actually waiting it didn't do anything and then i'm printing this thread number one or two whatever has entered and then I will unlock it so that T2 can lock okay now as you know that T2 was also trying to lock this at the same time but T1 got the race then T2 said mm -hmm, okay I can wait for one second if you can give me this lock in one second but what happened actually this T1 took two seconds at least. I'm not calculating how much how much time it took to increment this and to print this and to unlock it. Considering these two things very minimal, I will say that T1 took two seconds and T1 was sorry, T1 took two seconds and T2 was ready to wait for one second. So as you can see that T1 actually took more time then t2 is ready to wait then what will happen for t2 it will return false here and t2 will not go inside this t2 will come here actually and t2 will print thread number two or something could not enter and lastly we are printing my amount so as t1 was entered here it will only increment by one so you will get only one as output so let's quickly see the result and then analyze something else there is no error and if i will execute this see it is saying that thread 2 could not enter and thread 1 entered and the output is 1 so this is printing 1 and this is printing that thread 2 could not enter and did you notice thread 2 message was printed before this and that shows that thread 2 actually waited for one second only now let's increment this by two second and make this one second yes now it will come okay so let's recompile this and execute this see thread 2 and thread 1 both entered and now you have 2 as a output inside this are you getting this so this time what is happening let's suppose t1 got the log first then t2 said okay i'm ready to wait for two seconds and t1 came inside this t1 actually did something for one second and t2 sorry t1 unlocked it and as soon as this got unlocked t2 was actually ready to wait for two seconds but it got the lock in one second only because t1 got it work 
done in one second. That's why you can see that T1 and T2 both was able to enter inside this. So that's why this timed mutex is so beautiful if you have time constraints in your program. I hope you would have understood this. So let's quickly move towards example number two, which is for trilog until. This is exactly similar to what we did before, but instead of only simple seconds, we will give the reference that you wait from now plus one second. So our STD chrono steady clock will calculate what is current time from current time, it is telling that wait plus one seconds. Okay, and it will do the same job. Okay, so let's compile this uh -huh. and execute this. See, it will tell you the same thing. Thread one was able to enter, but thread two could not because here we are waiting for one second. I mean, T2 was waiting for one second and T1 took two seconds. So actually timeout came and T2 came here. Okay, now let's do the same thing. If you will make this one one and this one two, then both thread should be able to go inside this, correct? Let's see that. See, thread one and thread two, both was able to go inside this and result is two. Okay, so this is how time mutex work. So thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, dude. It will help me a lot to make more videos like this. And if you have any comment, let me know in the comment section. I'll be very happy to answer you for those things. Bye-bye. I'll see you in the next videos.